Right, 1.5, we're going to talk about inverse functions. So inverse functions should be a review of stuff that you guys have seen before. You've done inverse functions in Algebra 1, Algebra 2. Inverses are the opposite of something. The inverse of adding would be subtracting. The inverse of multiplication is division. And it goes both ways. So like the inverse of subtraction would be addition. The inverse of division would be multiplication. So it's the opposite. So one way that we can find the inverses, I'll say we have two steps. Step one is to switch x and y. And then step two is to solve for y. So in our kind of first example here, the first example that explains kind of what an inverse is, we have f of x equals x plus 4. f of x we know is just a fancy way of saying y. So first thing we're going to do is switch our x and y. So we have x is equal to y plus 4. Now we want to solve for y. We need to get y all by itself. So we're going to subtract 4 to move it to the other side. So I get y is equal to x minus 4. Now this is just a super basic example, but it kind of leads into like the definition of inverses. So this would be our inverse. Now when we name our inverse, you got to put the little inverse symbol. So you could either say the inverse of y, or if you wanted to, you could say f negative one of x. That little negative one is the inverse sign. So it's like f inverse is equal to x minus four. So these are the same thing. I don't care if you put y or f of x, that's fine. Just make sure you're naming it. You're telling me this is the inverse. These two are both fine. They both work. Now in the example here, it says from set A to the set B. This is kind of like our domain and range. If I plug in these numbers for the x, I get these for the y. So this would be x and y domain and range remember domain is with the x values range is the y values now with your inverse domain and range switch so if i plugged in my y value here into the x so let's say i plugged in five my f inverse of five would be five minus four which is one so i'd get one for my y so the domain and range flip with inverses. So that's described on the next page. We have f inverse, so the inverse of f we said was x minus 4. So notice how in the last question our set from a to b was 1 to 5. Here it's flipped. So our domain is the same values that's in our range of the inverse versus our range is the same values as our domain in the inverse. So your domain becomes the range, the range becomes the domain. We just switch. So when you're finding the inverse, you're doing like the opposite of the math that you're doing in your original function. So you're undoing everything in your original function to find the inverse. So the math is just going to be the opposite. If you're adding in one, you're subtracting. But the steps are important. It's not just all like opposite things that are going on. The order matters. One way that we can verify if two functions are inverses of each other is we can take the composition of those. So let's say instead of calling it f inverse, I'll call it g. Let's say that g is the inverse of f. If I take f of g and it simplifies to be x, and we take g of f, and the composition simplifies to be f. So if we get, simplifies to be x, if we get x for both of these, then they are inverses of each other. So then f and g are inverses. So in example one, it says find the inverse of f of x equals 4x. So I'm going to change my x and y. So f of x, we know, is a fancy way of saying y. I'm going to make that x and make my x y. And then when I solve for y, I'm going to divide by 4. So we get y equals x over 4. Now we can't forget to name our inverse. 
So either keep the y there or you could change it back to f of x if you wanted to. So f inverse would be x over 4. Now it says to verify that both f of f inverse and f inverse of f are equal to the identity function. So let's find f of f inverse. So I'm going to take the inverse and plug it into the x in my f function. So I have 4 times x over 4. When we simplify this, we get 4 over 4, 4x four over 4, which would just simplify to x. Let's do the same thing and find f inverse of f of x. So I'm going to now take f of x, so f of x is on the inside, take f of x, plug it into the inverse. So we have 4x over 4, which would simplify to x. So because we get the identity function for both of them, we get just x, then we can say yes, they are inverses. This is how we verify that they are inverses of each other. Next page just talks about like the formal definition of an inverse function. So it just says that same thing we were doing before. In order to be a function or to verify that something's a function, you'd have to take the composition f of the inverse of f and it simplifies to x. Same as inverse of f of f would simplify to x. Important here at the bottom, it says if the function g is the inverse function of the function f, it must be true that the function f is the inverse function of the function g. So then you can say that f and g are inverse functions of each other. So you can't have a function that's the inverse of another one without them being inverses of each other. Example 2 says which of the functions is the inverse function of f of x. Let's find the inverse first and then we can verify which one of the two is the inverse of it. So I'm going to switch my x and y. I know f of x is just a fancy way of saying y so that's going to turn into x and x changes to y. So x is equal to 5 over y minus 2. Now I need to solve for y. So I have to get y out of the denominator here. So you can either cross multiply or multiply both sides by y minus 2. So I have x times y minus 2 is equal to 5. Again, got to get the y all by itself. So now I'm going to divide both sides by x. So y minus 2 equals 5 over x and add 2. So y equals 5 over x plus 2. Now this is our inverse. Last step you want to do is always just name it as the inverse. So this matches function h. So h would be the inverse. Now to verify, just to be super duper sure that we did it right, and to verify that f is the function, f is the inverse of h, and h is the inverse of f, that they're inverses of each other. We can find f of h, And we know that that's going to simplify to x. We also have to find h of f and know that that's going to simplify to x too. So I'm going to take my function on the inside. So that would be h. And I'm going to plug it in to my function f, which is that original question up here. I'm going to plug it into the x in f. So we have 5 over... 5 over x plus 2 minus 2. Now you have to be super careful when simplifying. If you're just adding and subtracting when you have parentheses, you can get rid of the parentheses. So that plus 2 minus 2 cancels. So this would simplify to 5 over 5 over x. When you have a fraction in a fraction, you can cheap, keep, change, flip. So keep the top, change multiplication, and flip the bottom to x over 5. When we multiply this, we'd get 5x over 5, which simplifies to just x. Perfect. That was our goal, was for it to simplify just to x. Now let's do h of f of x and see if we get the same thing. 
So now I'm going to take my inside function, which is f, and I'm going to plug that into h. So we got 5 over 5 over x minus 2 plus 2. So let's simplify. When we have a fraction and a fraction, keep change flip. Keep the top, change multiplication, the bottom flips to x plus x minus 2 over 5. Fives cancel, so this would be x minus 2 plus 2. And 2's cancel, so it would simplify just to x, which was our goal. We needed both of these to simplify just to x. Now this is all just extra work. It's not really asking you to verify, but that's how you would verify. You need both of these to be true if you want them to be functions. But really, for this one, it's just asking which function. You need both of them to be true in order for them to be inverses of each other. But you, this question was just asking is the, which of the functions is an inverse. So we found the inverse, and that would just be h. So again, everything down here is just extra stuff. But we just did it just to show you guys how to verify. Next, we're going to find the inverses graphically. So we're going to graph our two functions and see if they are reflections of each other in the y equals x axis, I guess you could call it. So let's graph. We've got two lines here, so it's super straightforward to graph. My first line, I'm going to start by graphing my y-intercept at negative 3. And then our slope is 2, so we're going to go up 2 to the right one. You can put another point if you want. Up 2 to the right one. Once you have at least two points, you can connect your dots with a straight line. So that would be our f of x. Now for the inverse function. We're going to do the same thing. Just be careful here. It's not as straightforward as y equals mx plus b. Because if we distributed, this would be 1 half x plus 3 over 2. So it's a little bit more of a challenge to graph because our b isn't quite a whole number. But plug in points if you wanted to. We can plug in any value for x. Plug in 1. If you plug in 0, that gives us our y-intercept, which is not a whole number. Which we can graph. That's fine. You can graph it. It's a piece of cake. But I just want to plug in whole numbers here. So if I plugged in 1 for x, this would be 1 half plus 3 halves, which would be 4 halves, which is 2. So we're going to go to the right 1 and up 2. Plot our point there. Now let's plug in 3. We can plug in 3. So we have 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2, which would be 6 over 2, which is 3. So our next point would be 3. 3 comma 3. So we're going to the right 3, up 3. I'm also going to plug in negative 1, just to kind of give us more of an exact line here. So negative 1 would be negative 1 over 2 plus 3 over 2, which I'm plugging it into this. You could totally just plug it into the original one, too, and it would probably be easier. But we get 2 over 2, so negative 1, comma, 1. So to the left, negative 1, up 1. So now we've got three points. Again, you really only need two to graph your line. We can graph it. So this is f and the inverse of f. Now, if they are reflections of each other in the y equals x plane, the y equals x plane would be this diagonal here, which is where they are reflections. So this kind of this line that y equals x acts as our mirror. So similar to when we had our y axis as a mirror and we had like something like a parabola where it mirrors on both sides here our mirror is now just this diagonal so 
So yes, these two lines are reflections of each other in the y equals x axis. One other way that you can check kind of algebraically with your graph is that we know that since we switch the x and y, so x's become y's and y's become x's, if I had the point on one of my graphs, let's say I had 2, 1 on the blue graph, on our f of x graph, we had 2, 1, that was this point here. On my green graph, I'm going to have that same point at 1, 2, so 1, 2, which would be that point there. You can check this with all of your points. That's why I found a few extra points, not just two on each line. But that's going to work if functions are inverses of each other. The domain becomes the range. The range becomes the domain. X's become Y's. Y's become X's. Now, not every function has an inverse. So to tell if a function has an inverse, you do the horizontal line test. So function f has an inverse if and only if no horizontal line intersects the graph of f at more than one point. So if I had a graph that was a parabola and I put a horizontal line through it, it intersects at two points. So this function has no inverse. So an x squared graph has no inverse. So next page just talks about the same stuff. If no horizontal line intersects the graph of f at more than one point, then no y value is matched with more than one value. So then it would be a function. Similarly, a function f is one to one if each value of the dependent variable corresponds to exactly one value of the independent variable. A function f has an inverse function if and only if f is one to one. So you can only have one value from the x that matches with one value from the y. So it doesn't work in a parabola because we have, let's say this was, I'll say two and this is four, I guess that would work. So if we plugged in two into an x squared graph, we get four. And if we plug in negative 2 into an x squared graph, we get 4. So this function would not be 1 to 1. We've got two x values that correspond to the same y value. So that's why x squared is not an inverse or has no inverse. x squared would have no inverse. So instead of working out the math, or even graphing it, as soon as you see x squared, there is no inverse for it. So don't waste your time trying to find the inverse. There is none. So this table kind of says the same thing that I just showed you with the graph. If we have an x squared and we had the same value for two different, same y value for two different x values, if we found the inverse of it, our inverse would not be a function, so there just is no inverse. So if we had 4 for x, it gives us two different y's. So it doesn't work out for finding the inverse. So example 5 says use the horizontal line test to determine whether each function has an inverse function. So we can graph it to do the horizontal line test. With an x cubed graph, our graph kind of has this shape to it. And then if we subtract one on the outside, we'd go down one. So our x cubed minus one graph looks like this. Well, if I put a horizontal line anywhere through this graph, it only touches at one point. So this would have an inverse. So we can say, yes, it has the inverse to determine whether each function has an inverse. So yeah, it does. It's not asking us to find it, but we could find it if we needed to. B, we see that we have an x squared. If we put that on a graph, we have a horizontal line that goes through two points of our graph here. So this does not have an inverse. No inverse. Just for extra practice, let's find the inverse of f of x. So we're going to want to switch the x and y. So x equals y cubed minus 1. I'm going to solve for y, so add 1 to both sides. x plus 1 equals y cubed. 
to get rid of that cubed, we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to take the cubed root. So now y, or inverse of y, because now we got y all by itself, is the cubed root of x plus 1. So that would be our inverse. Or instead of calling it y, you can call it inverse of f. Either way works. Next page has the guidelines for finding an inverse function. So step one, use the horizontal line test to determine whether f has an inverse. You don't want to find the inverse and then to find out that it doesn't even have one. So first, step one, figure out if it has an inverse or not. Then in the equation, for f of x, replace f of x by y. Interchange the roles of x and y. So we just switch x and y and solve for y. Solve for y. And then replace y by f inverse of x. So step three, I'm going to say name the inverse. Got to put the little inverse symbol. So whether you put it on the y or change it back to f of x, either way is fine, but you have to put the inverse symbol. Step five, I would say, is just extra work that you don't really need to do, but you can verify that f and f inverse are inverses of each other by finding the compositions of them and seeing if it equals the identity, so that it just equals x. All right, example six, let's find the inverse. We want to find the inverse of our function. We're going to switch x and y, so f of x becomes our x and x becomes our y. Step one that I kind of forgot to do, make sure it has an inverse. The x isn't x squared, so we're good. We can find the inverse now. So x equals 5 minus 3y over 2. Now we want to solve for y. Got to get y all by itself. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. We're undoing everything on the right side of our equation to get y alone. So 2x is equal to 5 minus 3y. Make sure you do it in the right order. You can't just divide everything by 3 here to get y by itself yet. I need to subtract 5 first. So 2x minus 5 is equal to negative 3y. Now we can divide by negative 3. So now that we have y by itself, I'll switch it back to f inverse. So f inverse equals 2x minus 5 over negative 3. Or if you wanted to simplify it just a little bit more, I think WebAssign would take this as an answer, but sometimes like you can simplify your fraction. So if you wanted just to divide out that negative or divide the negative into the top, that would be fine. It'd be negative 2x plus 5 over 3. Or if it like simplified even more, make sure you know that negative 2x over 3 plus 5 over 3 would be the same thing. You would just divide both terms on top by your denominator. So either way works for any of these three. I think WebAssign would take the first one as an answer, and I would take that on the tester quiz, but just know that these are all the same. If you guys have any questions, you can email me. The WebAssign is going to be due the day after tomorrow, so that would be Wednesday. So if you guys have questions, you can ask me Tuesday, um, but I'll also post the test review for you too so you can work on the 1.5 web assign and work on the test review but don't forget to turn in notes by the end of class